Hey, it's the 27th of April. It's day 27 of Vlog Every Day in April. And I'm about to run out of fingers again. So today at work was completely normal surprise! Except for the fact that I woke up with a headache and because I was stubborn and didn't want to take any ibuprofen because I felt like I've taken a lot of ibuprofen in the last five or so days. I decided not to take anything so my head still kind of hurts, but it's getting better and it'll probably completely go away when I go to bed. Wow. But other than that, today was completely normal and boring and therefore nothing to report. My friend Katie's back from her trip to Florida for a friend's wedding, so that was exciting because I missed her and I miss seeing her at work. That was nice she was back. And I'm gonna read you stuff because I have nothing else to talk about. Other than the fact that I've been uploading um, LA Times Festival of Books footage, which you've probably been noticing if you've been paying attention to this channel at all. So the whole bunch of John Green and David Loveson footage now, like I promised I would put up here, is finally getting put up here. And it's taking forever, which is why the video is so sorry. Apparently this is my reading stand, so my eyesight with the camera is going to be really awful because I'm going to be reading stuff. So feel free to um, tune out the rest of this video if you like. In that case, bye! See me tomorrow! And if you'd like to continue watching and hearing me read stuff, um, you are welcome to do that. He ran, head down, worn out Chuck Taylor's pounding the empty and cracked street like a drum cadence. He ran despite the mercury in the thermometers that pushed well past 90, despite it, that it was day 8 of the worst heat wave in a century. He ran like the devil was after him. His arms pumped in perfect rhythm with his legs, each footfall landed solid on the hot pavement, only to be pulled up into the air again. His breath rushed from his lungs and scorched air rushed back in. He looked up once to judge the distance of the heat mirage street and then put his head down again to pick up just a little more speed. Little kids in faded bathing suits sat in the front porches, sticky from popsicles, and watched them fly by. Their grandmothers and neighbors watched the boy race down the street and shook their heads. Too hot to be running like that, they'd mutter and go back to their paper fans and damp newspapers. Jimmy Jones, small for his age and a limp from when his leg broke and was not set right, would tell the police they saw Elias McKean run down the street, but he couldn't tell for the sweater tears on his cheeks. That one was the one that I started like last week and would have rather been working on than done my Vita video. Maybe chaos suits you. She whispered those words into my ear before she climbed into the classic Mustang in love with him. Police found the car wrapped around a tree early the next morning. There were no survivors. I wish I could say that she was wrong, that my heart didn't break when she left, or shatter when I heard about her death as I sat in the diner. I want to believe that if I had been driving that car, she would be alive. Truth is, nothing would have saved us. She was always right. Chaos suits me. Damn. Yesterday, December 7, 1941, a date which will live on in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. Franklin D. Roosevelt addressed the Congress December 8, 1941. August 1944. Rob, Nick, and Jack stood under the tree line under the shelter of the branches. The war had erased any naive ideas of the war they had when they entered. They didn't want to be heroes anymore, they just wanted to get home alive. The three had been together since training and become as close as brothers. Light rain had been falling all day, and by early afternoon the ground was wet and muddy. Every now and then a drop of collected rain would fall from the leaf, usually down one of their shirt collars. They cupped their hands over the ends of their cigarettes to keep the ember from being seen. Other soldiers huddled in small groups and smoked and waited. The captain came out of the woods behind them. The boys better move towards the trenches, were expecting fire any moment now. They threw their cigarettes to the ground and began moving towards the trenches that were dug the previous night. Groups thrown together like drops of mercury. Bullets filled the air around the soldiers without warning. Nobody had to give the command a run. It was automatic. The rifles and packs bounced with each step. The mud slid under the boots and threatened to pull them to the ground. Rob ran and kept low like the second nature. He could hear the bullets. They sounded like hail as they hit whatever got in their path. It always started the same. A crash and then an expected silence, followed by his mother's voice full of surprise and anger and fear. Jasper shoved his blankets back, the early sun already warm as it flooded his open window. He swung his legs over the side of the bed and held his breath to listen. He had the feeling that he should know what was wrong, that he had done this all before, but the deja vu never fully realized. Silently, he slipped out of bed and tiptoed to his door. He stepped over the squeaky board in the doorway and slid, with his back tied up against the wall down the hall. Told you not to come back here, Anne's voice wavered slightly in fear. He stopped, his heart pounded in his chest and drowned at all of their sound for a minute. He took a slow breath and stood at the top of the stairs. A plate crashed from the kitchen. Maybe it was a glass. Either way, the sharp sound of something shattered on the linoleum. 
You heard the sound of a hand slapped against the cheek, and his mother's surprised, oh, sent Jasper running down the stairs. He forgot to be quiet. He forgot that he was 11 and skinny. That last one was what I wrote for NaNoWriMo 2009. 2008? 2008. Spring in Ukraine always came slowly, but the sun finally burned warm and jackets were open after long months of icy winds and heavy clouds. By April, the weather hinted toward summer. The sun was bright and the sky enameled in blue. The city of Prefit woke to a beautiful spring day on the 25th of April, 1986. It would be the last of such days. And that's the opening paragraph for the one about Chernobyl. Those are the ones that are most likely to be finished. If you've made it to the end of the video, congratulations and thank you. Um, you will be seeing me tomorrow which will be Wednesday, which will be the 28th of April, day 28 of Vlog Every Day in April. Hi, Mom! Almost done! Yeah, you'll be seeing me then. Bye!